answer the man the myth. There's, there's no myth out here, bro. Man, like Shwe, what are you saying? I haven't been on live for a minute. Black boy, how you doing? Michigan bands. I don't know what that means. You're the only online awakened person I choose to learn from. Rec I recognize you. I appreciate that, Carolyn. Thank you very much. Um, but I would say don't don't limit yourself to me because <laughs> I can't say that I know much. What's the mark of the beast, Gigi? That's a good question. Uh, the mark of the beast is a reference to the revelations. You know, they say the mark of the beast is evil will be at the front of your head or on your wrist. Now, a lot of people thought the mark of the beast was the vaccine, but that's just idiotic. It's definitely not that. Now, if we're referring to the beast, who is the beast? The beast is the devil, right? The beast refers to an animal. Now, whether that's the devil, whether that's the lower self, whether that's the reptilian brain, i.e. the basal ganglia, these are all reflections or representations of the same thing, the same mark. So when he's talking about the mark will be at the front of the head, that's a reference to the basal ganglia. Now, when he talks about the right hand, I'm not actually sure what he's talking about in that regard. Key the question is coming through though because I'm active for a bit. How do you perceive reality around people? Do you let their reality collide for small moments with yours or do you separate it? I kid you not, when I'm walking outside, I'm looking at the world, I'm looking at people, I'm looking at buildings and I'm trying to not see that in a sense of instead of looking at someone and saying that's a person, I'm looking at someone and saying that's consciousness, that's me. I'm looking at the creation of a building or a car and saying that's consciousness because when you begin to see your world as consciousness as in the illusion of what is, what it, what it actually is, it's much easier to then tackle reality. And when I'm around people, I don't spend much time around people, um, funnily enough, not as much as people would think, because consciousness is contagious. So most of the time, I enjoy being by myself. But then again, I'm an only child to my mom. So maybe I'm just called being alone. Who's your inspiration? God, that's my inspiration. How how could God not be your inspiration? Give you some of that water? No, definitely not. Baphomet, what about Baphomet? Oh, you guys are saying who it is. I mean, Baphomet, Baphomet is a, it's a depiction. So if you look at Baphomet, what, what do you see? You see the goat head. If I call you a sheep, what does that mean? It means that you follow everybody. But if I... You know, what's the difference between a goat and a sheep? The goat will be stood on top of a mountain by itself while the sheep is just following everybody else, right? Funnily enough, you know, in the Bible, you're referred to as the sheep. You know, God is the shepherd, right? But no one ever clocks that. Going back to Baphomet, the head represents the ability to go down a path which many people aren't going down. You see the smirk, it's mischief. Then you see the yoga pants because if you look at him, he's in a full lotus. Why is he in a full lotus? Because he's performing yoga. Simultaneously, what's that representing? It's representing Kundalini. You see the as above, so below. You got one finger pointing up, the other down. Universal law. You know what I'm saying? So don't don't see it as some scary shit that it's not because it's not that deep. How to ignore reality when it's giving you the direct opposite to your manifestation. The way that you go through with that is by reinforcing the fact that, let's say I'm trying to manifest money. Shit keeps messing up in my reality. I keep getting bills. I'm not making any money. How do you transcend that? You transcend that by taking that as a reinforcement. So, for example, when things start to go bad, right? If we break this down, you know, there's a, co there's a concept called the Demiurge. Now, in fact, let me get this book for you guys. Ugh. Alright, cool. So, let me know if the audio is alright because normally when I'm talking like this, the audio is always bugging out. But, anyways, so, this is a book that you definitely need right here. Let me clean my, let me clean my thing real quick. 
Gnosis. So if you see this book, this book is called Gnosis. It talks about, you know, the Gnostic, I guess, ideology, but it talks about the Demiurge. Now, if we break down, if I quickly read to you what the Demiurge is, this will help you understand why when you're trying to manifest stuff, stuff starts going left. So when you try to manifest more money, you seem to be having more money problems. There's a reason for this. It's not by accident that things get worse before they get better, right? So it says, the Demiurge can be seen as an artificial, metaphysical intelligence responsible for shaping, projecting, and reshaping space, time, and matter and energy. The Demiurge has a mind of its own. It is a programmable artificial... Con Whoops. It is a programmable artificial intelligence com Posed of etheric and astral energy now when you're talking about etheric energy etheric energy is what your soul is made out of you're made out of astral energy and etheric energy etheric energy is how do i explain this it's a subtle energy that influences quantum phenomena so for example if you ever heard of the quantum physical experience the observer effect that the ability for particles to be superimposed teleport so on and so forth, right? That's all the etheric side of things. Anything, any energy that can influence quantum phenomena, that's etheric energy. Now, when you talk about astral energy, this is what you, this is what your spirit is made out of. Anyways, he says, right? The demiurge is the lower ego of creation. It is a selfish parasite or rogue extension of the actual demiurge. It feeds upon energy negative energy in particular so when you're trying to manifest something and you're trying to get more money or you're trying to get more peace or you're trying to have a better relationship and it seems to be going left this is quite literally this energy of the demiurge the demiurge is one concept of it um in this book reality transurfing right in this book it talks about pendulums it's all the same things or it's an entity essentially what's going on is where attention goes energy flows when your life has been become accustomed to being broke, to being, you know, having toxic relationships, to struggling. Essentially, you've now given creation to something that exists and it wants to stay alive. Where attention goes, energy flows. It feeds off your energy. So what does it do? It gets your attention. So when you try to change your life, stuff starts going left because it's trying to get your energy back. So what you do, you spin your perception on it. So instead of something going wrong and you say, oh, this is terrible, what you need to start doing is saying, oh, this is going terrible because this is trying to get my energy. That, sh that subtle shift will allow you to step with a lot more awareness. Then your reactions will be different because your reaction is what perpetuates this. Keep the questions coming. Golden Beetle, no, I've never heard of that. Actually, I have in regards to ancient um, Egypt. Is it not a physical mod? No, W Nero, shout out Z, what's up? Shout out Farron and DK. Where did you get your knowledge? Who's your teacher? Multiple. <laughs> You're saying, where did I get my knowledge? I got more, multiple people. I, I don't just learn from one person. Multiple people. To name a few, um, Neville Goddard, Brother Panic, Bobby Hammett, C. Freeman, L., um, Aleem El Bay, Pharaoh in his young days. What's that guy called? Some other guy. Um, Krishna, Buddha, Christ. A lot of people, man. Do you know what the golden beetle symbolizes in spirituality? Actually, yes. The dung beetle is the, the symbol that they use, right? And it's something to do with a cycle. It's something to do with a cycle because of how the dung beetle takes the dirt and it creates out of it. But nothing's coming to mind right now. The man posts books every day, bro. Real talk, shout out Aaron. There's a part of the Bible that prophesizes. <laughs> There's a part of the Bible that prophesizes that people would say the world wouldn't end because it's been day and night since human existence, but we forgot and started out of nothing. Oh, sure. Bro decided to put on more Vaseline today. It's actually coconut oil, bro. I don't use Vaseline on my face. Baphomet is a metaphor. Real talk, he is indeed. Great identification. I appreciate you. The audio is perfect. Oh, for real? I did not know that. All right, cool. No worries. Bro, I was supposed to hop on a call with you just now. Uh, the calendar's been crashing. Don't worry, I'll sort it out. Reality hackers, hey, Nero, what's up? What's up? What's up? I'm underwater. Help me. Uh, get up out underwater, bro. What's your take on Kundalini and celibacy? <laughs> that's, a very, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. I'm assuming... Is that a guy that asked that? Yeah, it's a guy that asked that. All right, cool. So when we're talking about 
Kundalini and celibacy. There's two books that you're gonna need to read. Oh, all right, cool. So what you need to understand about any form of celibacy or sexual kung fu or sexual energy or anything in that regard is that you have to understand the actual process of doing it. Now, the Taoists were the best at doing this, Cultivating the Male Sexual Energy by Manta Chia. There's also a white dude on YouTube called Sexual Kung Fu. He's a bit, he's a bit beaky, but trust me, he, he's got good content. The second book you're going to want to get is this. Now, this is probably the most... The most information you're ever going to read on Kundalini in a book, like you can see, it's already thick. Like the guy who wrote it, you know, he's part of some cult, um, one hermetic cult called the Golden Dawn, I believe. Um, he he really really goes into detail with diagrams and stuff like that. Now celibacy is an extremely good thing because of course, you know, people the way the way people move, you know, just g in anybody, you know, people you don't know. You know, especially for women, the implications are a lot more severe on women because the feminine nature is receiving, right? And what happens with a lot of women is that they end up having sex with some bozos and then that energy, that negative energy that goes into them gets trapped in their in their root chakra. Then women, you know, get diseases and stuff like fibroids and have problems, you know, associated in that area. Um, you can't just be G in anybody. So celibacy is definitely a good thing. But if you are to be G in, then just be very mindful of who you're dealing with because some people are really out here. You know what I'm saying? Some people say STDs are sexually transmitted demons. <laughs> if you believe in that. Um, live all shark here. That's what you're saying. Um, Nero Oluwa. Nah, I'm not Oluwa, bro. I'm not Oluwa. <laughs> I'm not Oluwa. David Hawkins, decent. Yeah, David Hawkins is good too. I got a couple of his books. I got Power versus Force, and I got um, Reality, Spiritual, Spirituality, and Modern Man. Have you had even read books by Doctor Malachi? No, I haven't. Man said bald his shoulders. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. What's up, Cuz? What are you saying? How you doing? Shout out to you, no. How do you get rid of neg negative energy in the root sacral chakra? Excellent. All right, cool. So the funny thing is, I'm seeing a couple of men commenting on the sex thing with, with, with some emojis and that. But these are the men that do the most. <laughs> but anyways, um, how do you clear that type of energy that's locked up there? So essentially, what you want to do is understand that first, any type of emotional energy, whether anger, frustration, um, depression, sadness. Most of the time, when you get scared. You'll feel it right there, tense up. This is why some people vomit when they're scared. Some people shit themselves when they're scared. And it's because the energy literally gets stored up there. So your first instinct is always something to do with your stomach. So by coming to that understanding, the first thing that you need to do is realize that there's only one energy. Emotional energy is one energy. But the label that you put behind it filters the way that you experience it. So if I say, what's the difference between, what's the difference between being excited and being nervous? What's the difference between being excited and being nervous? The only difference between them is the label, the feelings. If you really think about when you're excited, and when you're nervous, the feelings are the exact same. The only difference is the label that you put behind it. Now, when it comes to having negative energy stored up there, the first thing you want to do if you're afraid or anything like that, or you're stressed out, the first thing you want to do is lie down and really like just lie flat and get relaxed. Now, upon being relaxed, the first thing you need to do is feel that energy Take it from the label of being, I'm worried, I'm scared to whatever, to just say, I'm feeling energy. The label that I'm putting behind it is making me filter it in a certain way. Upon doing that, then what you want to do is you want to feel into it. And the way that you do that is by being completely relaxed and then breathing into it. Now, once you're completely lying flat, you'll understand what I'm saying. Immerse yourself into that energy until it's no longer there. Because essentially, the reason the energy gets stored up there is because you're acting like it doesn't exist. But when you focus on that energy in that position, it begins to dissipate the more that you begin to feed into it and immerse yourself into it. So when you're feeling scared of some shit, the worst thing you can do or worried or anxious, the worst thing you could do is act like it doesn't exist because that energy gets trapped in your root chakra. But then that also stops it from being able to flow up to the solar plexus, throat chakra, heart chakra, third eye, whatever. 
it's very very important i actually have um i actually have it written down um i have it written down somewhere but um i'll probably post about it after this but yeah keep the questions coming keep the questions coming what's your thoughts on neville goddard's teach abdullah he's great um i tried to find that information about him i couldn't find anything like god constructs like god label constructs yeah even when we talk about god the people say no god find god even when we say the word god we've already limited god <laughs> it's like you know the hum the human language can't confine God because in order for us to speak, we need to process our thoughts. As soon as we process anything in our mind, it becomes finite, which means that we've limited God instantly. So when niggas talk about they know God and all of this, it's all bullshit because it's like, how can how can you? You got any advice for traders? Thanks. Focus on the process. Don't do too much. Shout <laughs> Kaden, long time, bro. I hope you're good. Keep the questions coming. Have I read um, Supernatural by Dr. George Spencer? Yeah, great book. Uh, what were the books called? Serpent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Let me show you the books again, bro. My bad. I'm just restructuring stuff here. Ugh. All right, cool. So um, the book was Serpent Rising. Serpent Rising by, what's this guy's name? Nevin Pa. I think he said he's from Hungary in his book. Yeah, that. And then that's for Kundalini. And then what kind of ties into that is the. Where did I put it? It's the Tao Secrets of Cultivating Male Sexual Energy by Mantat Chia, which is right there. Alright, cool. Um, what other questions do people have? Man said big chest Nero. Coming from Tino, this wham guy. <laughs> this guy, man. Do you know much about auto suggestion? Yeah, that's more so alignment with what what's his name? Um Napoleon Hill was talking about. What's your top three books? I'll get into that later. How do you deal with people teasing you when you're leveling up? You just drown them out. You just drown them out. You know, the people that, the people that, you know, the people that talk the most at like sports events is the niggas in the seats. If you're really out there in the field, you're not talking as much as somebody who's watching. And that's, that's the way that I view it. People are going to talk whatever. You know what I mean? Um... But the one thing that you have to understand is that consciousness is contagious. And because consciousness is contagious, you know, when you're trying to elevate to a certain degree, you can't be letting certain, I guess, words be said around you, certain thoughts or certain concepts be entertained. Um, one thing that I actually did talk about the other day, and I'll talk about it right now, is that how many people are in here? 53. All of you niggas, every single one of you, you all need to forgive your parents. All of you. Everybody needs to forgive their parents. Now, there's no way that you can elevate to any level of high spirituality without forgiving your parents. And when I'm talking about forgiving your parents, of course, it might hit your ear like, oh, you don't know what I've been through, so on and so forth. And that it's like, cool. But if we're going to break this down spiritually, then what you need to understand is this. In order for you to elevate to any degree, right, your chakras have to be in alignment. Energy has to be flowing through your chakras in alignment in order for that to happen. Now, the heart chakra is what allows for a higher level of consciousness to be unlocked, Christ consciousness. Now, whenever you see Jesus, whenever you see Jesus in 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 depictions he's always he's always doing the as above the as above so below thing now if you pay attention now this will tie into why i'm saying you need to forgive your parents is because of this uh sorry i'm just looking for the most clear image all right cool so right there whenever you whenever you see this white boy that they tell you is jesus right <laughs> cesare borgia you can see that he's doing the same hand signs as Baphomet. Now, this is the as above, so below. But if you pay attention to the heart in these images, the heart is always on fire. Now, the heart is on fire because this is representative of your heart chakra being aflamed, being enlightened. Now, when, upon your heart chakra being fully activated, you can see the next hand is always pointing up to where? 
his head. And I don't know if you can see that very lightly, but that's a light. Here's, here's a more obvious depiction. So upon your heart chakra being awakened, the next hand points up to his head and says, hey, look, this is that high level of consciousness. That's the light that comes from it. Whenever you see these depictions, he's always got light around his head and he's always pointing to his heart. This is an extremely occult image because what they're telling you is if you want to attain any degree of high consciousness, then your heart chakra needs to be unlocked. Now, the reason I was saying that you have to forgive your parents is because most, most of us haven't forgiven our parents. Now, what I mean by that is this. Of course, you understand spirituality to, do a, to a degree in the esoteric, but a lot of people find difficulty in being able to move past and forgive their parents because, of course, you know, our parents, you know, they might have made mistakes. They probably could have raised you better. They could have done things differently. They could have done a lot of things much better than probably what your consciousness is telling you. Right. But what you have to acknowledge is that before parents, they're people, they're people like me and you, they're people run by their programs. And because they're run by their programs, they can only act within the capacity of what those programs allow them to do. Now, most of our parents learn from our grandparents and they're not any better. Right. And it's just the passing down of this type of consciousness. And unfortunately, your parents might have, you know, done you dirty or maybe done something that they shouldn't have done or they could have done something better. But so long as you hold that kind of resentment towards your parents, you're negating the purpose of why you're here. The reason why you're here to a degree, right? Before we get into any religious talk, the reason that we can all agree that we're here is we're on earth to transmute. You're here to transmute your soul, your spirit. Spiritual transmutation is a process of taking the dark aspects of the soul and tr transforming it into light. Now, when we're talking about light and dark, in this reference, right, because I don't like it when people say dark is bad because, you know, that has negative connotations with me being black and so on and so forth. But in this context of spiritual transmutation, dark is a reference to negative, frustration, envy, anger, disappointment, sadness, anger, I said that twice. You're supposed to take all of that stuff and transmute into light. Because supposedly when you transmute into light, you go back to the creator. Now, what is light? Light is consciousness. In Ephesians, in the Bible, it says all things are made manifest by light. Bar for bar in Ephesians. When people die, what do they say? They say, I see the light. Is it heaven? No, it's consciousness. That's what light is. When they say big bang, it was light, right? God said, let there be light. Light is consciousness. So the process of spiritual, spiritual transmutation is to integrate oneself back into oneness with the creator. But you can't do that if you haven't forgiven your parents because you're holding on to that negative energy. Now, the way that you break this down is like this. For the most part, your parents could have done things better. You first need to see them as people run by their programs because they can only act within the capacity of what their consciousness or their paradigm allows them to act to. Second, you then, upon seeing them as people, you actually have understanding, especially if you talk to them. If you actually talk to your parents and say, you know, how did, you know, grandma and granddad raise you, so on and so forth, you gain insight into why they're molded the way that they are. Because you have to understand that people cannot act out of the capacity of their paradigm. Nobody. So when you're acting, when you're expecting someone to act in a certain way, they can only go as far as their mind will allow them to, which is why you shouldn't really be frustrated by people caught up in their programs. Because when you're confined to a certain paradigm and you're trapped in a square, it's, you can't see anything out of there. It's like being in a maze. You then begin to feel pity for your parents. But then after a while, right, you then understand them. And then if they will allow you to, your job is to help them because you chose your parents. All of us chose our parents, right? We all chose the lives that we're going to live on earth. We chose these people. We chose to learn for whatever reason we want to learn. So you mustn't be ignorant and just, you know, write off your parents completely because that's what a lot of us do. But if your parents will allow you to help them and if they can't, then that's, there's not more to it than that. Keep the questions coming though. Shout out Coach Tyrese, man. I love your content. Uh, exactly, exactly. You're not forgiving them. You're not forgiving them, you know, necessarily for them, right? You're forgiving them for you because it's all a game of chakra alignment. It's all a game of consciousness. If your heart chakra ain't awakened like the white boy Jesus in that photo, 
that energy will never be able to flow all the way up and help you reach that next level. Exactly, Neo Lord, exactly, exactly like that. I know you was reading the Quran. Have you looked into Sufi Muslims like Rumi and Persian philosophy? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was reading the Quran last week. I actually haven't read it. Um, it's up there. Um, for those who don't know, um, I like to read all of the Abrahamic religions, even the Bhagavad Gita. I believe I've got it right here. I was reading it the other day in the cafe. Um, I make it my job to read all the religions because what I believe is that God... You know, not he or God as people have begun to conceptualize God, but God, the consciousness has revealed itself to its highest degrees across many different cultures, from the Arab culture with the Quran, with the Europeans with the Bible, with the ancient African spirituality or Kemetic side of spirituality with the Africans and the black people, the Jews with the Torah, um, Indians with the Bhagavad Gita and the Veda. So I make it my job to read all of these scriptures because... I don't think there's place for ego when it comes to wisdom. You know what I mean? Even though I'm not religious to any degree. But yeah, I love Rumi. Do you believe social media like TikTok fry your brain? Nah, I mean, they're short-circuiting. It's all a dopamine thing, right? It's all a dopamine thing. And that's one That's one reason why I actually started posting on social media. Um, for those who know me, you know, I never wanted to be in the limelight, right? Even me, you know, gaining nearly 20,000 followers in a couple months. I never intended for any of this to happen. Um, in regards to social media and stuff, of course, you can see I like my spirituality. I like my metaphysics, quantum physics, consciousness and stuff like that. Ancient spirituality. Um, but I said to myself, you know, if I'm going to get on social media and post content, I might as well, you know, do some damage to the whole system by giving people short form content. That at least when you watch my content, you're never necessarily entertained but you're educated you know what i mean which is why i think your social media should be set up in a way all of your social medias and i'm sure all of you all of your social medias are set up in a way that you extract more from it than it takes from you of course it takes our attention and energy because social media is an energy exchange but you can take something from it um do you do dopamine detox uh i mean i guess you could say i do i mean i intermittent fast um, for like 24, 26 hours, I meditate daily, you know, on weekends, I meditate in a steam room, a sauna, um, delay gratification always. It's about, it's about taking control of the ego. Um, I'd have moderated to this. It's crazy. They have. They. Do you believe Rumi's writings about the heart chakra? I haven't. I haven't looked into too much. I read one quote the other day where he said something like, "The more I search for myself, I found God. And when I found God, and when I looked for God, I found myself." I'll try to find the quote right now. Um, but my my but my actual like Muslim friends they hated that quote. <laughs> Like my 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 um orthodox Muslim friends they didn't like that quote yeah he says I searched for God and only found myself I searched for myself and only found God I thought that was I thought that was pretty deep I thought that was very very deep do you know Idris is the Islamic prophet yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a video about that on my TikTok um that the Hermes is Hermes to the Greeks Thoth to the Egyptians. Mercury to the Romans, um, Idris in the Quran, Enoch in the Bible, um, Kun Kun Khan to the ancient Mayans. Hey man, love your content, appreciate it, bro. Jeez, that's a deep question. What do you think about getting cerebral spinal fluid up to the pineal gland, third eye, and having it secrete DMT so it can make you experience a 5D, what Christ would define as heaven? I think that's the purpose of the game. But I don't think you should go out of your way to try and unlock your third eye. Like, I know there's a lot of third eye meditations that people talk about and stuff like that. But I think as long as you're moving in the right direction with your meditations, your reading, you know, you, you'll eventually get there in your own time. You don't want to trigger spiritual psychosis. Um, 
what can you say about fake gurus? I don't, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to that. But what I will say is never hold anyone too highly in regards, even me. Like I'm here right here and I'm talking my videos and I make my content and I read my books. But never get caught up on the messenger. Get caught up on the message because that's what they did to Jesus. Um, people have done it with all, with all religious figures. They get caught up on the messenger as opposed to the message. Right, you never want to do that. So even when you see fake gurus talking online, you need to humble yourself to a point where even people that you consider fake gurus, they might chat shit and they might not actually do any of the shit that they tell you to do, but they might say some facts sometimes. So you have to be humble enough to, to to be able to discern when you should extract information from somebody without holding them too high in regards. I'm not. I'm not your leader. I'm not your teacher. I'm not your follower. I'm. I'm none of those things to any of you. And if I am. Break that shit in your head right now. What I am is a student and I just share my knowledge. I'm forever a student. And, you know, I don't necessarily want people to agree with me. All I want for each and all of you is intellectual independence. You know, I have no problems with people believing whatever they believe. So long as, so long as you have challenged it and you've opened yourself up to other belief systems, then that's fine. But in that regard, yeah, that's what I can say about fake gurus. I don't know. I don't I don't really I don't really think about it. Oh hi Lisa. Definitely Pierre War. Jesus is the right direction. Um If he is to you then he is to you. But it's like, you know <laughs> He he's one of my favourite um he's one of my favourite Christs. You know, when you say Christ, niggas think it's Jesus' name, but it's a title. It's a title to a reference and an elevation of consciousness across multiple people, from Krishna to Eau of Indra to Buddha, um, Jesus or Yeshua. That's four that I've named, but there was 16 before Jesus. So Jesus wasn't the original. You know, if you look at the things that Jesus did and a lot of the things that he says, there's a lot of what he says that is referenced that has been said by Thoth. Who can also be seen as a Christ. You know, Jesus performed Reiki, right? <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff. But um not to not to take anything away from it, but once again, you know, if you like the knowledge of Jesus, then you'll like the knowledge of Buddha, right? You just need to humble yourself and not think that this is the one true person. That is, of course, unless you're religious, then if that's you, then sure. Nero, is okay to read multiple books? Yeah, I read multiple books at once. But then again, I read multiple books at once because I guess I'm at a point in my life where I've read so much that I'm quickly able to discern if a book is good or not. But um, I used to take my time. Have you read the Hebrew untranslated version of the Bible? I actually haven't, bro. Have you read The Complete Idiot's Guide to Alchemy? I haven't. These are a lot of good recommendations that I'll look into. I went through spiritual psychosis. Yeah, it happens. It really, really happens to people. How how are you gonna explain that? How are you gonna explain that only Jesus won with death? Oh, you're a suit. Oh, you're referencing. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's talk about this. All right, cool. I'm glad that you asked. Stay right here, my friend. I have something very important to show you. You're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. <laughs> I'm very excited for this. So you guys, you guys, make sure you lock in. Make sure you're locked in. All right, cool. So I'm glad you asked this. And by the way, um, who, who is this? Mona Martha. This, this, this isn't, you know, any form of attack or anything like that. I just like it when people bring up these points so we can really get into it and unpack it. Because I think, you know, there's some things that I could learn and there's some things you can learn. So Martha. Mona Martha said that, how are you going to explain that Jesus is the only one that won death? Now, what she's referring to is the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ. Now, let's break this down. Let's really break this down. <laughs> Let me pull up some Bible scriptures too, actually. Let me pull up some Bible scriptures because uh, I'm very much excited. Hebrews 9.28. Yes, that is the perfect and I've got my Bible right here, but I've also pulled up some scriptures online. So yes, let's 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 really get into this. Let's really get into this. So someone said 33 on the clock. So Mona Martha said that how are you gonna explain that 
I was assuming she was saying that Jesus was the only Christ that won death, so he's somehow superior to the rest. Cool. Now, when we say Christ, right, Christ isn't nobody's name. That's the first thing that I want to get into your head. Christ is not a name. It's not a noun. It's a title. The same way master is a title, teacher is a title, Christ is a title. So don't think, you know, Christ is Jesus' second name because people say Jesus Christ. That's not that's not his that's not his first and second name. Christ is a title. Now, where does the word Christ come from? Christ comes from the Greek word Christos. Where does the Greek word Christos come from? Christos came from the ancient Kemetic word cursed, which means the anointed one. It was a process to which people were mummified and anointed with oil. But it also showed a representation of an elevation in consciousness from a low level to a high level in the same way that a butterfly goes into a chrysalis, sorry, a caterpillar goes into a chrysalis and turns into a butterfly. So this is why Jesus was known as the anointed one. So biblically, when it talks about Christ was crucified and resurrected, instantly, whenever you see Christ in the Bible, you shouldn't be thinking about a person because that's not the meaning of Christ. Because remember, the Bible is transliterated from Greek, right? So if we're going to look at it, Christ comes from the Greek word Christos. Christos came from the ancient Kemetic word cursed, which was a representation of being anointed or an elevation in consciousness from a low level to a high level. So it's consciousness. So then it's like, cool, how was Christ crucified? How was Christ crucified, right? Because if Christ isn't a person, Nero, how can consciousness be crucified? I'm glad you asked. So if you know the location at which Christ was crucified, Christ was crucified, the location was known as Golgotha. Golgotha, right, when you break down Golgotha in Greek, right, you get the word Calvary. So if I go on Google Translate, right, quick, if I go on Google Translate for you, give me two seconds. Google Translate, I type in Golgotha. Go, Gotha, and I put it to Greek. Perfect. There we go. So you can see that Golgotha, right, in Greek translates to Calvary, which is why they say Christ was crucified at Calvary or Golgotha. Remember, transliterated from Greek, so we're working it backwards. So just just so you didn't miss out, right? Christ isn't a, Christ isn't Jesus' last name. It's a title. It's a title like teacher or master. Christ comes from the Greek word Christos. Christos came from the ancient Kemetic word K-R-S-T, cursed, which means the anointed one, which is why they said Jesus was the anointed one. But it's also a symbolical representation of a low level of consciousness elevating to a high level in the same way that a caterpillar goes into a chrysalis and then elevates to a butterfly and it can fly. So Christ is consciousness. How was Christ crucified and resurrected, right? Christ was crucified at a location called Golgotha. Golgotha in Greek, translated from Greek, means Calvary. Now, in Aramaic, Golgotha means skull. So, okay, Christ was crucified at the skull. Now, what theologians say was that the hill that he was crucified on was shaped like a skull. But if you go down into the actual Aramaic, right, Golgotha means skull. Right here, it tells you right there, boom. So, Golgotha means skull. So then it's like, all right, cool. Christ was crucified to the skull. What, what does that represent? Okay. Christ, which is a representation of a level of consciousness, was crucified onto your skull. The potentiality for you to elevate your consciousness to the same degree that Christ did and others did is a potentiality which lays in you. Now, the, now a lot of people would say, you know, that's blasphemy. How can you say that? I can do what Jesus did. Well, I have another Bible scripture for you. Jesus himself in the chapter of John, which is my favorite esoteric chapter, by the way, says right here. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth in me, he that believeth in consciousness, the works that I do. The works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. So, like I said, 
Christ was crucified in the skull or Golgotha, Calvary. Calvary or Golgotha in Aramaic means skull. Christ was crucified to the skull of man. It's a potentiality which lays in you to elevate to that degree, which is why in John 14, 12, Jesus said, the works that I do, you shall do also, and you can even do greater. Even the John chapter 10, right? All the way from 1 to 36, if you read that story, Jesus was arguing with the Pharisees and Sadducees at the time, who said, who is this person who is blaspheming? Who is this person that is blaspheming? You know, you say that you're God. How dare you say that? And John 10, 34, Jesus said, Is it not written in your law? I've said, ye are gods. You're gods, but you shall die like men. And what law was he referring to? Psalm 82, 6. But going back to what I was saying anyways, without getting sidetracked. So Christ was crucified to the skull. So then how is Christ resurrected? Now, where did Christ resurrect? He resurrected in the east. Christ resurrected in the east. Cool. Let's get a compass up. Let's get a compass up so we can see where is east. The east will always point to the right. All right. Across all compasses, the east goes to the right. This is a reference to the right hemisphere of the brain, because the right hemisphere of the brain is the aspect of you, which is spiritual, intuitive and creative, not the left hemisphere, which is logical and rational. And it's saying this doesn't make any sense. So Christ was crucified in the mind and he's resurrected in the east by activation of the right hemisphere of your brain. So I hope that makes sense, Mona. Thank you for sending me down on that tangent. Christianity is so illogical. All religions are illogical. Let's keep it 100. All religions are logic illogical. But, and it's funny because you said illogical. There's nothing logical about any religion. Nothing. Because religion is the aspect of the right hemisphere of the brain, which is all spiritual and intuitive. So if you're looking for logic in religion, you're never going to find that. Because if I poke holes in any religion, it's going to sound like shit. And it's because logic isn't everything. Logic is only one half of you. Logic is your left hemisphere. Spirituality is your right. Yes, it was scary and it will be for the people around you, but the mindset you require. Yeah, let you're saying it's all metaphorical, but people witnessed. <laughs> oh, I love it. You're saying it's metaphorical and I'm not laughing to disrespect you, but right. This is someone said illogical. You're saying it's all metaphorical, but people literally witnessed his resurrection and witnessed and, and it's written into history. History is his story, but anyways, even years later, people talk about it as a fact. All right, cool. Let me show you something. Now, let's say I take this notepad and I pass it down to my grandkids to then pass on to their grandkids to pass on to their grandkids. Are you now going to tell me? Oh, hold on. Sorry. There we go. Are you now going to tell me that all of a sudden it becomes a fact because it's written? It, it, things don't work like that. It, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. And the actual, um, ex the actual people that wrote the Bible, when we're talking about John, Luke, you search this up yourself right now without arguing. The Bible was written 2,000 years later after all these people existed. So how does that even make any sense? All right? And I'm not saying anything that, you know... That's just from these books that I've read. I'm saying this, that you can search it. Search it right now on Google. When was the... In fact, just write, did Luke, John, and all the other people write the Bible? It will tell you that they didn't. Of course, they're compilations and so on and so forth, but... He is funny, man. Appreciate it. And bro, listen, don't get it don't don't get it twisted, right? Like you're saying why would his disciples say they witnessed his resurrection if he meant if it meant being killed, he lied to them. Bro, these are stories written about people you've never met, people that there's no evidence that these people existed. And it's funny because a lot of religious people say that there's evidence for this. Well, it's not, because if it was evidence, this wouldn't be a belief, it would be a fact. Is this a belief or a fact that there's a book behind me, a bookshelf? It, a belief means that it's absence of logic, of proof, of being able to be quantified. So don't tell me that this is, you know, 
it's it's all it's all just written and everybody's like yeah this guy because it wouldn't it wouldn't be a topic of discussion it wouldn't have to be a belief you understand what i'm saying and somebody said that religion is control um to a degree i don't agree because i think religion is good for society because it allows people to function without being overly crazy um but i believe that religion can lead to compromising of morals right of course and but overall, I believe that all religions are coded with ancient, you know, esoteric wisdom or metaphysical wisdom. Because, for example, this person that seems to be going back and forth with me had nothing to say when I broke down the etymological root of Christ. Right. Even when people talk about Jesus coming back, the scripture they're referring to is Hebrews 928, which says the Christ will return a second time. But see, of course, it has to be understood that. In fact, let me just pull it up so I can show you. Hebrews 9.28, so the Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time. Once again, it didn't say Jesus, it didn't say, it didn't say the white boy, Cesare Borgia, it said Christ. And what I mean when I say religion isn't worthless, because a lot of spiritual people say religion's worthless, I don't agree. I think there's a lot of wisdom in religion, but you just have to have the ability to be able to interpret it and understand it to that degree, because it's all coded. For example... Get this book, um, the guy who's going back and forth with me, get this book. And if you're into it, get this book. Now, this is called Mythic Mystic Christianity. And what it will teach you is that John the Baptist, his father, was a priest. Now, back in the day, when you was a priest, a high priest, sorry, you were initiated into an occultic order called the Essenes. There's a gospel missing out of the Bible called the Book of the Essenes. And the Essenes were an occultic order that taught baptism. So it's no surprise that John the Baptist, he was part of it, but then he left. But then he still brought baptism, the occult practice of baptism, which people think is a Christian thing, but it's actually an Essene thing. But of course, you know, this isn't to go back and forth, but I believe well, if we're all on the journey of truth, then you can't know. Because if you know, then it's not true, right? Theologians are brainwashed people. Jesus is a metaphor, bro. I understand the resurrection can be merited and history is falsified. But what I believe is this, bro. Like, I genuinely believe that regardless of order, because a lot of spiritual people come try to talk shit on the Bible and the Quran, and they say that, you know, religion is um, control. But they're just, they're just, they're just, they're just retards. Like, they're, they're actually just being completely ignorant because when you really truly understand what is in scripture in this nobody can dismiss the wisdom of the quran nobody can dismiss the wisdom of the bible nobody can dismiss the wisdom of the bhavad gita but those people a lot of spiritual people right they get egotistical and think that they've got it all figured out so they say i'm not going to read those books the reason i can call up bible scriptures from my head is because i actively read the bible and give me give me 10 years i would have read the quran and i'll be able to do the same right because I love this stuff because it's literally coded wisdom, like it's coded wisdom all over the place. But people don't realize that it's coded wisdom and they interpret it on one level. Like people believe that Jesus is going to come back. You know, my grandparents do. They're Jehovah's Witness, which, you know, is entirely fine. I never debate with them, of course. And a lot of people have been waiting on this guy who's who's not going to come back in the way that he thinks because Hebrews 9.28 says the Christ will appear a second time. And the Christ is a representation of consciousness. I mean, the Bible can be broken down in many ways. It is an esoteric book. It's a metaphysical book. It's an astrological book. I mean, Holy Bible translated to Greek is Helios Biblios, which is sun book, right? Which is why Jesus is the son of God. And if we're talking about astrology, there's 12 zodiacs, there's 12 disciples, right? But that's one level of it. It's also physiological. When it talks about hell, it talks about fire and brimstone. What's brimstone made out of? Brimstone's made out of plenty of sulfur, where upon eating extremely acidic foods, will you create tons of sulfur, which will eventually lead to brimstone. The stomach, when it's talking about the land of milk and honey, the pituitary gland and the pineal gland that secretes a creamy-like substance and a golden yellow-like substance, the land of milk and honey. Um, the Bible's also a... What else have I missed? Astrological, metaphysical, esoteric... Um, Kabbalistic, which is ancient Jewish metaphysics, the first branch of um, metaphysics coming down from the Abrahamic religions, which is what John the Baptist and him and his father were part of. Do you go to church? <laughs> no, I don't. I used to go to church all the time. Shout out, Cam, what are you saying? I used to go to church all the time. Um, I was extremely religious. 
I think the Gospel of the Essenes completely changed my diet. Crazy, crazy. Also, the Book of Thomas, yeah. And that's another thing, right? Uh, the author of the Mystic Christianity is a guy called um, William W. Atkinson. Now, William W. Atkinson was a Freemason, and he helped write the book called The Kabbalion. If you've ever heard of The Kabbalion, The Three Initiates, he is one out of the three initiates. William, William Walker Atkinson. Somebody mentioned the Gospel of Thomas. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, to give you kind of my story, I was an extremely religious person, um, so religious that in school there was an essay that we had to write, which was to question God, where was God during slavery and the Holocaust. I refused. I refused to write. I literally said to the woman, I'm not going to question God because I'm not supposed to question God. You know, I used to pray every day, go to church all the time. I used to, I went to, I went to youth conference, like weekend trips away in church and stuff. And then I think there was a turning point one day when I looked at my life and, you know, my family was struggling financially. I'm like, you know, my family, this we're good people, you know, we're good Christians. My mom's an angel. What's going on? And I was like, huh. So then for a brief period of my life while reading the Bible, I came across the story of King Solomon. King Solomon was the wisest man of all. And if you know King Solomon, um, he also wrote a book on demonology, which is something else. But King Solomon only used to pray for wisdom. That's all he used to pray for. It said he prayed for wisdom and then God blessed him with everything else. So I used to pray for wisdom. I did this for months. I prayed for wisdom. Then one day a thought came into my head. Who wrote the Bible? Like beyond, you know, John, Luke, Matthew, who wrote the Bible? So then that led me down a study. I ended up reading some books that I shouldn't have read and I kept reading. And then here we are. <laughs> here we are. Um, going like, it's not just the Bible that I read, right? I read the books that they took out the Bible or they rejected from the Bible at the Council of Nicaea. Um, the Apocrypha right there, the complete, the complete Apocrypha. And this contains all the other books that they rejected from the Bible. Somebody decided that, hey, I'm not going to put, you know, this book into the Bible because I don't want people to understand. You know, even if we go over here to the Nag Hammadi text, which was, you know, a bunch of scriptures, a bunch of gospels that were dug up, you know, a couple a couple of decades ago that were found. This also has missing gospels. So people don't realize when they're talking to me, they're talking to somebody who not actively reads the Bible on a weekly basis. They read the gospels that were taken out of the Bible. Right. Which is which is. I love it. Like, I genuinely love this stuff because it's interesting to me. It's like, religion is the most interesting thing in the world because so many people, people die for their religion. And I always said to myself, how can people be willing to die for a thought that they weren't born with? There's not a single thought on this earth that, you're, that you are born with that you take all the way up until you die. When you're a baby, you don't know about the Quran. You don't know about the Bible. You don't know about the Bhagavad Gita. People like to believe that you do, but you don't. You, you don't, you don't, you don't, you're not born with your name as the first thought in your head as a child. So I said, how are people willing to die for ideas and beliefs that aren't theirs? Which led me to study it. I love this stuff. Um, I'm looking for the Gospel of Thomas because somebody referenced it. It's in here. And I don't know if you saw, but I got a lot of highlights in here. Because, you know, I'm always trying to break stuff down. 235. And I love the Gospel of Thomas. I love it. Because Jesus, he, he was talking. He was talking that talk in here. Like he was talking that talk. Um, and he says, he says, those, those who say heaven, if heaven is in the sky, then the birds are closer than you are. If heaven is in the sea, then the fish already know it. The kingdom of heaven is inside and outside of you. That's from the Gospel of Thomas, which correlates with Luke seventeen twenty one, which says, Lord, there nor here the Bible, sorry, Lord, there the kingdom of heaven is within you. That's Luke seventeen twenty one correlates with the gospel of thomas so it's not like these texts are completely outrageous i know a lot of people a lot of my friends especially they, they don't trust these which it's like why would you trust these when they've been taken out of the bible as opposed to the ones that are already in the bible i'd be thinking why did someone keep certain books in the bible why do catholics have like eight more gospels than christians it's like what's going on there Have you read how old do you think the Egyptian civilization was? Okay, I'm assuming you mean when you're saying Egyptian, we have to distinguish between Egypt or Kemet because those are two different periods in time. Um, do you have any books on Rosicrucians? I actually do have books on Rosicrucians, bro. Um, let me show you right now. 
Uh, uh. Alright, cool. So, first one, the Rosicrucian Handbook of Hermetic Secrets. I'm not gonna lie, this book is on some shit. Like, if you want to be able to manifest your reality with kind of like occultic secrets and stuff like that, and when I say occultic, it's not like they're going to be sacrificing babies and shit like that. It's just talking about how to literally reprogram your mind, like with various things. That's one, um, the Rosicrucian Handbook of Hermetic Secrets. Another one is the Secret Doctrine of the Rosicrucians. This is a great one. And I really like the Rosicrucians. I really, really do like them. Um, I, like, I like their way and their thoughts. You know, people always ask me if I'm a Freemason. I'm like... No, but if I was to join any society, it'd probably be the Rosicrucians, but like, they're not even active like that. And then Rudolf Steiner, because he really went into it heavy with the Rosicrucians. Um, he was one of the people who actually brought it to light. So those are some books on Rosicrucians, bro. Have you read Meditation by Marcus Aurelius? Yeah, of course. What do you know about Mansa Musa? What do you know about Mansa Musa? What do you think about Three Magic Words? Great book. I recommended it a whole hell of times. Can you let these books into a, your highlight? Most of them already are in my highlight, bro. I love the books that I read. I literally post books like every day. Someone even said he posts books every day. So like, I don't know if people just aren't seeing it or bro's like a young Billy Carson. Yeah, that guy is like 75 and he looks hella young, so I don't know. Um, what do you know? What do you think about the Antarctica hidden mystery? The belief that Antarctica is secretly a civilized, secret civilization that they've locked off because all the countries in the world signed a peace treaty to make sure that nobody ever explores it. That's eh, coincidental. Who knows? What do you think the fruit of knowledge and good evil symbolizes? I don't know, actually. That's a great question. That's a great question. I don't know. But what I would say is, if eating from the tree of knowledge and evil would teach people about good and evil, if I went up to someone on the street and I said, do you think it's good that we teach people what good is and we teach people what bad is? They would say yes. So then why would God try to hide that from people? Why would he try to hide the blurred lines in between it? Um, if we're looking at good and evil, we can see them as representations of two existing polarities. When Adam and Eve were in heaven, you know, you could say that they're in a state of non-separation. I mean, I guess they were separated in the sense of, you know, masculine and feminine, but before the world went to shit, supposedly. And the being that led them to do that was Lucifer, which of course is his name is Lightbringer, or the bright morning star which is funny because in revelation twenty two sixteen, jesus calls himself the morning star too yeah yeah they did find those bro what have you decoded from the quran so far not enough to speak about it. I, I'll, I'll happily talk Bible scriptures for days because I can call this shit off my head and I know the context of which I'm saying things in. But I, I, I'm not well versed enough with the Quran to speak on it. And I think speaking on things that you're not entirely aware of or you couldn't defend is ignorance. So I'm just not going to talk about that. You feel me? Oh, hi, Nicole. Hi, Mia. What's your religion? I ain't got one. I've written down at least 12 of the books that you've liked. Appreciate it. I don't understand what Rudolf Steiner means when he talks about Lucifer. I don't understand the difference between Lucifer and Satan. Excellent. All right, cool. So Lucifer, Lucifer, the devil and Satan, they're not all the same. They're not all the same. Now, you've been taught that they're the same, but they're representations of different things. So understand what Lucifer is. Who is Lucifer? Lucifer is the fallen angel. Lucifer is a fallen angel. Now, have you ever noticed that angel and angle are very similar words? The reason for that is because angels are entities that can bend light, which is consciousness, to, sp to particular angles. They represent different degrees of consciousness. Now, if somebody's a fallen angel is representing 
the devolution in consciousness. You're falling from one level down to a lower level, which is why Lucifer is the fallen angel, because upon having a certain level of consciousness and status, he fell down. Well, this is what the story represents. He fell down to the earth and he fell in love with the world and he fell down to a much denser, lower vibrational plane, which we call earth. Who is Satan? Satan is derived from Set. Who is Set? Set is the adversity of Horus. Horus and Set, um, Horus being light, Set being the darkness, which is why when the sun's going down, but it's kind of up, they call it a sun set. It's set because of Set, because they supposedly Horus and Set would fight all the time, and it would cause a contrast in the light. That's where we get sunset from. So Satan came from Set, who is adversity to Horus, which is a representation of a higher and lower self, constantly in battle. Then who's the devil? <laughs> The devil is more in alignment with Set, which is a representation of adversity, your lower self. The devil is also called the beast. And what is the beast? The beast is a reference to the portion of you, which is an animal through your reptilian brain, also known as the basal ganglia. Or being just trapped in flight or flight or just caring about eating and fucking. That's, that's literally it. I hope that made sense, man. I hope that made sense. But that's the, that's the difference between Lucifer, the devil, and Satan. Even though they're often conflated to be one. Any more questions for the time being? Made sense to me. I'm glad to hear that. You haven't read the Quran. No, I got the Quran right here. I got the Quran right here. I don't know if you see it. It's on the high shelf. The Quran right there. And I read it weekly. Not as much as I not as much as I should, but I read it. I even do wudu when I when I do it, bro. When I read it. One thing that I do know it says in the Quran is Allah does not change the conditions of the person until they change themselves. To actually give you the actual like um the actual the actual scripture uh, right here um I don't even know where to show you uh, it says page two fifty um it's on Quran dot com and it says there um where does it say there we go there we go Allah does not change the condition of a person unless they change themselves um to me. That's as within as without As in you're never going to Your reality is never going to be different Unless you're different right? Which I like that But other than that Other than that I'm not speaking on the Quran Because like I said I don't like speaking about things When I haven't read about them To a degree where I could defend The idea against somebody Because a lot of people's ideas Sound good until they had people You know attack it what can you tell me, what can you tell us more about the emerald tablet and the connection to the bible the emerald not even just the emerald tablets but the the hermetica in general the hermeticum let me show you oh right here the hermeticum or the corpus hermeticum the collection of all the hermetic texts that were written inspired multiple parts of the bible these texts are thousands thousands of years older than the bible um poimandris which is a story in there about um, the dragon which came to Hermes upon him meditating. You know, Hermes, sorry, not Hermes, Thoth calls himself the son of man. You know, all of that stuff in Jesus known as the son of man. There's clear inspiration when these texts are written thousands of years earlier. But supposedly during Jesus' missing years in a book called, non -can it's a non-canonized version of the Bible called the Gospels of the Holy Twelve. It says that Jesus went down into Egypt and studied from the ancient mystery schools. Um, Egypt actually had a lot of influence on a lot of the Bible. I mean, even when you're talking about, you know, the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments are simply the 42 principles of Mayat. The 42 principles of Mayat were declarations that you would make upon entering, you know, the afterlife. And don't forget, Moses, Moses was an Egyptian. He was raised as, as an Egyptian, right? So it talks about stuff like, you know, I have not committed adultery. I have not slain. I have not murdered. You know, I have not bear false witness. And the actual 42 principles of Mayat are 1,500 years, 1, years older than the Ten Commandments. So there's clear inspiration 
Um, there's even there's there's a bunch of stuff, man. Damn, now I want to know your opinion on Crowley. Yeah, those those some dark people still. All the people that you just mentioned, Crowley and all of those and stuff, people like that, you know, drinking babies and all that weird stuff. Those people represent the dark aspect of the occult, the, the left-hand path of the occult, the dark side. Um, that, I, that stuff is not for me still. Like, I, I looked into it because, of course, I was curious. And the stuff that they do is really, really... Yeah, yeah nah, man, it's, it's too much. It's too much. Um, yeah. Crowley set pace, though. Um, Alistair Crowley, he said the he set the foundation for Hollywood, Hollywood and Hollywood. That's why they do all the weird shit with celebrities. That's all based on Alistair Crowley, you know, getting people to, <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever. I don't think non-Muslims can do a valid wudu, but mad respect for doing it. Ah, oh. but I swear Muslims believe that everybody is a Muslim, right? Like, everybody at heart is a Muslim. That's why you don't convert, you revert. You go back to it. And I believe the definition of Muslim is submission to God. And I, I submit to God, but um, I guess the definition of who God is and what how God would want it is completely... I guess that's what the discrepancy is. Um, Can you explain the Cultivating Sexual Energy book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can briefly explain that for you. No problem. All right, cool. So when the male Cultivating Sexual Energy book, what they're talking about is this. So... The production of sexual energy, we all have sexual energy, right, can be transmuted. In Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, he talks about sexual transmutation. He talks about, he literally says sexual transmutation. And it's the conversion of, you know, abstaining from sex. Because once you abstain from sex, you store up a lot of energy. Now, if you understand, if semen can produce life, it is creative energy. You create with your thoughts and, well... Not just your thoughts alone, but your thoughts and your emotion, which is energy emotion, which is energetic vibration, which coincides with vibratory alignment, right? Those combination of thoughts and emotions, what shifts your reality, because you don't really create it, but you shift it, right? And the production of semen is creative energy, and semen's actually created by pulling every from every organ of your body. That's what it's created from, which is why when you bust, not only is your vibration lowered, but you're extremely tired. So what sexual cultivating sexual energy is about, it's about instead of releasing that energy through an orgasm outwards and kind of wasting it if you're not, you know, trying to create life, it talks about recycling that energy because the body, the body has a system of recycling, has the ability to recycle that energy. So if you can see right here, you can see that there's fire and there's water. Now, they say that water is women, which is yin, and men are yang because it takes a while for a woman to get turned on or horny. This takes a while for water to boil. But if a fire is lit, it's already lit, right? So, essentially, you have sex with a girl, but you don't orgasm. And then, essentially, what happens is you've taken some of her yin while with your yang through breath work and visualization and following up that energy by being able to tense pelvic floor muscles, testicle breathing and stuff like that, you create a loop of that energy to circulate and you circulate up to where? Your third eye or your crown chakra, which then enhances your ability to manifest things. And what they used to do, what Chinese emperors used to do, listen, <laughs> what they used to do, they used to have their wife there but then they would G like 30 girls and not bust once, take all that yin and then use it to make decisions. I kid you not. But yeah, that's that's a short summary on the book, a short summary on the practice. You know, there's a bunch of things you can do with it. Why are you wearing glasses though? I wear gla I wear glasses so people don't really know who I am too tough because I'm not here for clout. I don't wanna walk outside and niggas come up to me like, hey you're you're that guy. Um I don't like any of that. I'm just here to drop knowledge to the people that wanna hear it. If you don't wanna hear it then that's your business and that's calm. It's completely fine with me. I already told you, brother, drop the plastic ball. I know I'm lacking, man. I need the copper thing. I'm lacking. I know. I know. I'm sorry, man. Don't worry. I won't ever drink water. I won't ever drink water on live again. 
I don't see you sipping on the coconut on coconut water today. Now you lot, you lot on me, star. You actually on me. You actually on me. Nice to see you again, Aisha. Um, with all this research and knowledge, what do you think life after death looks like? That's a great question. I I can't tell you what I think it looks like. I can only tell you the theories on it. Because that's what it all is. The Bible is made before the Quran, but people argue against this. I don't think anybody argues against I don't think anybody argues against that. Because the Quran is a revelation based on things that was wrong with the Bible, things that were corrupted with the Bible, and things that need to be reestablished by the word of Allah. So you know, I don't think anybody agrees with that. The Bible's two thousand years old, the Quran is one thousand five hundred years old. I know Muslims do have the belief that Adam was the first Muslim and then everybody after that is also Muslim, which is why you revert. But I don't think anybody would say that. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right about Crowley. Crowley was, he was just weird. Like, even towards the end of his life, if you look at his photos, he just went mad. Like, he just looks crazy. That's how you know you should, he was doing stuff he shouldn't have been doing, man. Porn is a dream stealer. Now, real talk, porn is dangerous because... You know, a lot of people get trapped up on porn, innit? And without even realizing that, you know, let me show you something. The lowest vibration that anybody can experience isn't anger. It, 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 it's not anger. It's not sadness. That, that's not the lowest vibration you can experience. The lowest vibration you can experience, which has been calibrated by Dr. David Hawkins in Power Versus Force, Maps of Consciousness, on the scale of consciousness explained, is shame. That is the lowest vibration you can experience, which is why if you ever watch Game of Thrones, when Cersei was overtaken, what did they do to her? They walked around and said, shame, shame, shame. Shame is the worst. It is the lowest vibration that you can experience. When you experience shame, that's the lowest vibration, which is why in Hollywood and shit like that, they make celebrities wear dresses, do hella, hella beauty shit, stuff that they know they will feel ashamed about. Why? Because that's the lowest vibration you can experience. And once you lower your vibration to a susceptible do once you lower your vibration to a particular degree, you're then susceptible for entities or demons to enter. You understand what I'm saying? And to show you what I'm talking about when I'm talking about um the lowest vibration is shame. You can see on the maps of scale right there. Now the reason why this taps into porn is because a generation of men are being kept in that vibration of shame and if you're at the bottom there's no way you're ever going to be able to attain a high degree of consciousness or motivate or cultivate that sexual energy and direct it into your reality there's just no way that's going to happen best in best ig page i ever followed appreciate you bro appreciate you block boy baby the baby sounded a bit sus so i'm going to say a pause on it but appreciate it block boy Thanks for the knowledge now. Thanks for being here. Do you understand how heavy metals and other pollutants directly tamper with our vibrational state? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pollutants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, even certain clothing labels. Like, this, this shit is deep. Is there a particular theory on life after death that you personally resonate? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I guess the one that I particularly resonate with is the aspect of reincarnation supposedly our souls come down here to experience you know whatever you are born to your parents to learn from your parents you know your soul knows that it's going to live a life of potential poverty or whatever whatever i mean that depends if you subscribe to the quantum parallel universe theory but anyways um it comes down here with the purpose to learn something and if it doesn't learn then it'll come back again you know past lives isn't news to anybody Right. Everybody's heard of past lives. Most people have seen the baby that's born and he's two years old, you know, not seen in real life, but documentaries and stuff like that. Obviously, it can be fabricated. But the two year old talking about, you know, I was John Williams and I was a soldier in World War Two. Then they go look up the nigga and he actually existed and he died and stuff like that. It's, it's a mad thing. But you know, no religious people ever explain their way out of that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's like, I thought you go to heaven or hell. It's like, but I don't believe in heaven and hell personally. It, it doesn't make sense to me. And in fact, let me explain why heaven and hell don't make sense to me personally. Cool. I die now. Let's say I go to hell. I go to hell. The Bible describes hell as physical torment, um, fire and brimstone, and gnashing teeth and torture. If we had a ghost, if you had a ghost in your house, you, you wouldn't punch the ghost. 
You wouldn't try whip the ghost. You wouldn't try bite the ghost with gnashing teeth, no matter how sharp the teeth are. You wouldn't try burn the ghost. So if a spiritual being, a spiritual non non corporal being, a spiritual entity cannot be affected by physicality or punishments that pertain to stuff on the physical plane, then how, when my body stays in a grave or gets cremated or a coffin or whatever, how will my spirit get burnt, tortured, attacked, tormented, you know, bit with gnashing teeth? How How is that going to happen? How is that going to happen? Now, what that tells me is that heaven is written by a man or a woman. You know, I'm not sexist. <laughs> heaven, not heaven, hell was created by a human being. And the reason I say that is because the ego, can only, the ego can't conceive of anything other than itself. So when I'm thinking, what's the worst punishments that anybody can go through? I'm going to think, damn, what would hurt me? Damn, if someone, someone hit me, someone burnt me. And it shows that that didn't come from God, in my opinion, because it's written from the finite mind of man, which can only conceive of the ego and what the ego can go through. How can my spirit be burnt, tortured at any of that? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And then heaven. I mean, Luke 17, 21 says the kingdom of heaven is within you. The gospel of Thomas says the heaven is heaven is within you. I mean, it says heaven, the kingdom of heaven is inside and outside of you. So then, why would I have to go to heaven? Why do I have to wait to die to go to heaven if heaven is within me? Wherever I, wherever I am, heaven can be there. If my mind is up to that level. Why do, I, why do niggas need to die before they go to heaven? But Luke 17, 21 tells you that the kingdom of heaven is within you. The gospel of Thomas tells you that the kingdom of heaven is inside and outside of you. So why would I have to die to go to heaven? And I right, cool. The description of heaven. Would I even enjoy that? Would I, would I, enjoy, would I enjoy just chilling like that? Maybe I want to laugh with my niggas. You feel me? Maybe I want to be with my girl. Is that heaven? Like, people, people's, people's description of heavens, your personal heaven, how many people are in here? 50, 56. 56 of you, your description of heaven ain't going to be the same as mine. If we're talking about what we would enjoy to experience, it's not going to be the same thing for everybody. So why would everybody like one thing? It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. I thought heaven is a physical place and it just don't make sense to me no more. Yeah, real talk. It is nice to see you too. Now I expect that after this live, you'll purchase the 18 for 80 pack of organic coconuts fresh from Thailand. Send me that link and I'll buy you one too. Um, heaven is, hell is only in the mind if you allow yourself to dwell upon it. Real talk. You know, they say that heaven is the thoughts above you and hell are the thoughts beneath you. Exactly, a physical torment, how if your body is dead, like a real talk, like what are they gonna do to me? When's the world coming to an end? I don't know, I'll check my calendar and let you know, bro. I know the microplastic people are preying me right now, like this guy's drinking plastic, he needs to be executed. I'll get the copper bottle, don't worry, I'll get it. Mm, yeah, as a bust up below. What's your take on the Illuminati? I ain't got no take on the Illuminati because them niggas don't them niggas don't mean shit to me. Why should I have a take on the Illuminati? Because regardless of whether I study the Illuminati, the Rosicrucians, the Freemasons, the Skull and Crossbones, the Bilderberg Group, the Council of Thirteen, the Illuminati, which I've studied all of these people, it gets to a point where it's like, calm. What can I actually do with this knowledge? It's like when niggas debate if the earth is flat. It's like, cool, if the earth is flat or if it's round, how does this change your life? How does this position your mind in a better position to conquer reality? Me studying the Illuminati don't do shit for me, right? It really doesn't. It, it really doesn't. But the Illuminati, of course, Illuminati comes from being illuminated, which comes from light. And, you know, light, light is spoke about across all religions. You know what I'm saying? So... I don't know. It doesn't mean anything to me. I mean, if you're talking about like it from a celebrity sense of like Hollywood and all that shit, which by the way, Jay-Z, Beyonce, um, Lil Baby, Lil Durk, 
Um, none of them niggas are in the Illuminati. I'm sorry to break all of your hearts right now. None of them niggas are in the Illuminati because you don't get into the Illuminati based on your money. You don't get in there based on your influence. You don't get in there based on your clout. You get in there based on your bloodline. Why do you think the queen was with her cousin? Like, like niggas think like, cool, you know, you got a couple millions now and now you sign your life away and you're in the Illuminati. Boom. No, you, this ain't a club that you can join. Like, it's bloodlines. It's why they keep their shit on luck. Like, it's nothing to do with that. But, I don't know, man. That stuff, it doesn't really do anything for me. Perhaps we could recommend some port intoxifiers or these plastic pollutants. Yeah, you need to, man. Do you still bump rap? Of course, bro. I was listening to the Gunner album. Are you mad? <laughs> see, the funny thing about me is it's like people, I guess when you see me talking the things that I talk about and stuff like that, it's very difficult to forget that I'm just a regular person. Like I'm just a regular nigga that was raised in the yard like anybody else. I like Henny. Like anybody else, I was drinking Henny well, on the weekend from the bottle with my boys at a motive. It's like, I'm a regular person, you know what I mean? And I guess I guess it's hard to distinguish for people, you know, like, oh, you know, people think that, you know, I probably don't listen to rap, I, I don't drink, I mean, you know, I don't eat meat, pause. I do all of those things, you know what I mean? But I guess in moderation, like, I'm not listening to drill, like... From sunrise to sundown. That's just this is idiotic, you know. I'm moderate with my consumption of meat and even don't eat meat some days, pause again. You know, I don't drink alcohol all the time. You know what I mean? It's all in moderation. But I guess maybe one day I'll reach a point of spirituality where I can hop on here with some crystals and a daishiki and I say grand rising niggas and I I'm a vegan all of a sudden and I got dreadlocks. Maybe that day will come for people. But I don't see it coming anytime soon. Pause again. You should try DMT once. <laughs> uh, nah, man, I'm scary. Man said poison in moderation. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny, man. Would you become a Mason? That's a good question. That's a very, very good question. Would I? At this moment in my life, no. At this moment in my life, no. I know Masons in real life. I talk with Masons on social media and they say that, you know, the knowledge that I talk out there is some of the things that they discuss among themselves. And it's like, you know, I mean, if I can learn this stuff without having to join them, then why would I need them, you know? And I know people that have joined for, you know, networking and stuff like that. At this point in my life, no. Um, no. Nah. To be honest, I want to make my own secret society, if I'm being honest. Man like Julian, bro, what are you saying? Ask, believe, receive, real talk. What's your thoughts on the WEF 2030 and the whole New World Order? I don't like to buy into hype, but is this something you're preparing for? I mean, don't talk about the New World Order if you don't know what the Old World Order is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Every zip I know has kidneys are still. Nah, serious. Our livers, you ain't touching us, bro. Serious. Have you ever experienced our body meditation? Yeah, I've astral projected once. It wasn't even an accident. You have light coming from your head. Maybe it's consciousness. Maybe it's cocoa bar. Who knows, man? What's your take on astrology? That's too vague a question. What do you mean? I mean, I always say to my friends, especially my female friends, because they love astrology, of course. You know, astrology has been commercialized as some type of relationship prerequisite. You know what I'm saying? People will be like, oh, I can't chat to them. They're a Gemini. Or they're a Taurus. And I think that's nonsense. I think astrology is cold in trying to determine, you know, what particular times these large corporations distribute and sell their products. What particular times things are being done because this is all going off astrology. You know, JP Morgan himself, the guy, he kept astrologers on payroll. He said millionaires don't need astrologers, but billionaires do, you know. And I don't think, that's not to say JP Morgan, actual financial institution, has those. But the actual JP Morgan did. Mm. 
Bro, you know more than the Masons. Nah, I can't say that. I mean, I, I mean, the Masons that I know, they, they don't, they don't, they, they're not all there for the occult esoteric shit. Like people think you join Freemasonry and then all of a sudden you wake up as this occultic, you know, esoteric guy who knows all this stuff. Some, some niggas they're just there to network. You know what I mean? And meet powerful, you know, directed people because it's just it's a fraternity, it's a brotherhood. They want to meet like-minded people. I think. You know, the conspiracy YouTuber and the Christian YouTubers have done a good job of convincing everybody that they're all evil people that pray to the devil. But, like, they're just regular people, man. They're just really regular people. What's your thoughts on veganism and spirituality? Are they direct? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, veganism in is vegan Veganism in of itself seems to become an agenda because I don't know why they're making artificial meat with large, you know large quantities of soy soy produce a ton of estrogen it's not really good for men you know it throws you off your masculine balance right um but in regards to veganism i i don't you can be vegan and not be healthy i think the lines have become blurred in between healthy and veganism and i think people need to understand that not everybody's body fits the same you know a, a white boy's body from europe isn't going to be the same as a Zimbabwean boy, a Zimbabwean black boy's body from Zimbabwe. Like, our bodies aren't going to be the same. So to try create this one-fits-all thing just isn't really how it goes. In regards to actual, like, alkaline diets and stuff like that, I studied into it, man. I really did study into it. You know, I have plenty of books in regards to it. African Holistic Health. This guy, Dr. Lalika Africa. Amazing. Probably, probably, you know, one of the best. Like, like, SEBI level. Like, the documentations and stuff like that um there's also these two right here very very decent ones plant-based alkaline diet decent this is more like a cookbook recipe book type shit um and alkaline herbal medicine this is also a decent one as well oh mucusless diet healing system also decent very very decent books so i you know i'm very aware of this stuff you know which is why i take you know i take my ginkgo below but i take my spirulina i take my cmos you know i take my turmeric you feel me like I'm, I'm i'm very aware of these things um but to say that you can't be spiritual without being vegan is it's complete nonsensical because my ancestors you know without going too far back you know let's go back a generation or two or three they, they weren't vegans like they're Zimbabweans live all eating meat, pause. But to say that they're not spiritual is to be completely, you know, like dissonant of the connection to which my ancestors had prior to religion and stuff like that. So, yeah, I can't say that. I can't say that the two are in alignment. What's your thoughts on sleep paralysis? Don't be afraid of it. That's what I would say. Freemasons big into King Solomon because King Solomon has a book on demonology. King Solomon, the wisest man of all, and I don't do that in quotes because normally when you say wise, people always attribute it to be a good thing. But if I say demons, that's a bad thing, right? But King Solomon used to conjure demons live. Oh, like... Is manifestation a scam? No. But the industry around it is a scam. That's a great question. Manifestation isn't a scam, but the industry around it is a scam. You know, people will make you believe that, you know, there's a secret method to visualizing or a secret method to affirmations. First of all, the only reason any of that shit works is because you believe in it. That's it. That's the only reason it works and for no other reason. That's the only reason it works. And people, you know, have... Humans have this, this tendency to externalize the power, which is truly within. People tell you that, you know, you must go to church to pray to God. You must find God. It's like, what? You know, God is within, right? So on and so forth. But God is within everybody. And then recognizing, stepping into that unconditional love through that perception. Um, why was I even asked? Why was I even asked? I'm tripping. Oh, manifestation scam. Yes, it's the industry around it. That's a scam. Because a lot of these people, they will tell you things to keep you in a perpetual cycle of paying for their products. You feel me? And I say that as somebody who studied everybody you can imagine. James Allen, Napoleon Hill, Rhonda Byrne, Dr. Bruce Lipton, um, Dr. Joe Dispenza, um, Billy Carson, um, um, Neville Goddard, Abdullah, Joseph Murphy... Um, who else am I missing? I feel like I'm missing a couple more people. 
I'm missing a ton more. Frederick Dodson. I got you see all the books behind me. I've been reading this stuff, and it's like they make it more complicated than it needs to be to make themselves seem like they're these great people. And not to say that they're not, but it's all an ego trip. I don't believe in the devil, but how do you believe? How do you perceive the purpose of satanic elements in Hollywood or magic? Well, you first need to understand what what all of that is. You know the purpose of all of that. The purpose sort of all of that isn't necessarily anything to do with the physical devil who wants to jump out and niggas and be like, "Hey, you're going to hell, man." The purpose of all of that is all to do with vibrations. This is why most rap songs have eight to eight beats. And Kanye talked about this before he disappeared. You know, he spoke about how you know rap songs have eight to eight beats, and eight to eight beats in particular trap the energy in your root chakra. Root chakra is associated with your animalistic tendencies of eating and sex, which is why all niggas want to do is kill each other and fuck. That's literally it. Which is why that that particular music has that effect. But um in regards to this all the vibrational things, all the law of vibrational, so much so that they'll make sure their artists are drunk off their mind, drugged up, right? And when you drink bad alcohol, you lower your vibration susceptible for entities or demons to enter you, which is why people say, oh, that wasn't me. I don't know what came over me. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm on demon time. And it's like, is that really the rapper talking or is that a lower vibrational entity? But then when we come and take it in combination with the 808 beats with traps music in our lower chakra while reciting these lyrics, which impress our subconscious mind, it's like, but then we say rappers get killed instead of they killed themselves based on the words that they were saying, because when you speak, it has a vibration, you know, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, right, speech gives a vibration, Our bodies aren't the same because white people are mixed with Neanderthal. Which is why I said you have to understand your genetic composition before, you know, thinking there's a one size fits all. Listen, the grandmasters of Freemasonry are the gatekeepers of the lower tiers and don't know anything about the plans that's being pushed above them. I guess that's what niggas say, right? That's what niggas say. Where do you recommend getting CMOS? There's a guy called Sinise. Heal thyself. He's good. Have you heard of the Rotary Club? No. Best book on spiritual education. Huh. Great book on spiritual education, three magic words, always. Three magic words by U.L.S. Anderson. Really, really deep, deep book. One of the first spiritual books that I broke down. He breaks down how morality is an illusion, so on and so forth like that. There's not, there's not evil, there's just error. Error in consciousness, which I guess lines with the Gnostic beliefs of the Demiurge and how it became corrupted. But yeah, man. Why do you wear shades? I wear. Sh <laughs> I got asked this question earlier. I wear shades because I don't want really. I don't want people to really clock me like that. In a sense of, I don't want people to particularly know who I am. Of course, I used to wear a mask, but the reason I was shying away from the attention and the clout was because of my own traumas and stuff like that in regards to, you know, relationships with parents and stuff like that. Whatever, but um. I just said to myself, I don't want to be walking on the street and someone comes up to me and they're like, yo, you're Nero. I, I'm not here for that. I'm not here for niggas to be like, you're that guy. I'm not, I'm not here for that. I'm here to give you guys information. If it makes sense, good. If it doesn't, then it's not supposed to. If you screenshot books and go read it and you help yourself, that's great. Other than that, I ain't here for nothing else. I'm literally not here for clout games and shit like that. I could care less about clout. You feel me? Or I'd be bait face and everybody would know who I am and I'd make it seen and shit like that. But more time, whenever you see my posts, it's never about me because it's not about me. It's bigger than me. Prophet Suleiman would control the jinn's demons. Yeah, but you do need to... Oh, well, maybe it says in the Quran. I haven't read it in the Quran, but, you know, the history behind him was that he used to conjure them i don't know if you're saying he controls them without saying that he used to bring them into existence or for example he'd see one and control it i don't know but how many hours do you read a day probably like two or three king solomon had control over demons because it was a miracle given to him by god as a prophet no one on earth shall have that gift and the antichrist will be the tribulation on earth is that is that the um, Islamic perspective Because it kind of seems like the other guy Day one Hey man, I think we need a chat I mean, sure, my DMs are always open 
I teach business principles off King Solomon's business strategy. That's really cool. DM me. That's really cool. I'd love to see that. I'll even share it. You feel me? Like the thing about me is if you see my story, I'll share Christian content. You know what I mean? As long as long as you're contributing to people's consciousness and you're giving people facts, I'm going to repost it regardless of my own opinion. Because one thing that I believe is that there's multiple paths to enlightenment. Like, I don't think you have to not be religious to find enlightenment. I think you can be Christian and find enlightenment. I think you can be Muslim and find enlightenment. I think you can be Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist and still find enlightenment. There's multiple paths to enlightenment. There's not one way. And the belief that there is one way is completely idiotic because God is infinite. So why would an infinite God create one particular way? To get through to them. It just doesn't make sense. They took out XXX to speak in facts. Yeah, yeah. Best way to raise my vibration. Shift your emotion. Man like Farron, you know. Man said a really good book. Mr. Knowledge. Hello, Ian. How are you? Bro, save this live just for an hour at least. So we can write down all the books. Guys, I'm not really into saving my lives, you know. I'm not really into saving my lives. Apologies to the plastic haters. Yeah, there's religious schizos about. That's why Freemasons got police in there. Kabbalah, my G. Kabbalah say. I think Kabbalah say. Some people think that it's evil, but no knowledge, no knowledge is inherently evil. Knowledge is like a knife. It can be used to cut bread or it can be used to kill someone. It's the intention. Best introductory book to visualizing for manifestation. Great question. So uh, that would have to be... Where is he? My bookshelf is... My bookshelf is... Neville Goddard, The Complete Reader. This is the best comprised literature on visualization. The best. Literally the best. I've read every book you can imagine. Creative visualization. Um... I, I, I can't even but you see them behind me anyways i don't really need to explain but i've read every book on visualization that you can imagine every book on manifestation that if there's a book on manifestation i've read it this by far is the best one like i've been on this journey for seven years but i came across neville like three or four years ago and within a year or two of in of integrating the stuff that he talks about my life changed like i don't know if you can see this but like you know the book it's got bare drawings bare colorings you know that's that's literally all it is because it's literally in rags. Like, you literally see it. It's in rags. Like, he's really the guy. He's really the guy. How much time do you spend reading? Two, three hours a day. I believe the Bible says we have dominions over demons. Of course we do because we're high vibrational. And that's why demons try to get into people because they're, they're, they're lower vibrational beings which want to exist on the physical plane because they only exist to a certain degree. They only exist as spirits, which is why they like to bodily possess people and do the mad thing so they can, they can experience reality to a different degree because of their level of consciousness keeps them vibrating at a certain degree. Start a book club. No need for that. No need for that. I don't think people would be able to keep up with me. What's the best way to raise your vibration? Shift your emotions. I said this earlier. Your vibra your emotion emotion is energy in motion, which is energetic vibration. Energetic vibration produces a signature known as a frequency, which has been calibrated by Dr. David Hawkins in the level of consciousness. So when you look at the levels of consciousness over here, you can see that there's different emotions that vibrate at different levels. So it's not necessarily about what you eat, but it's about the emotions that you experience on a base level, which is why if you read the Kabbalion, the Kabbalion tells you to control your moods because it's your emotions that are the base form of what actually creates reality. Because if I think to myself, I'm a millionaire right now, a million cash ain't going to drop in my hands. But when I take that thought, combine it with emotion, which is energy and motion, it super attaches and increases the quantum probability of that collapsing down into reality through wave collapse. Because when you think a thought... You can only think based on neurotransmission. Neurotransmission is an electrical process. When you think that's your brain sending neurotransmitters, it's because the human body is electrical. It's what Dr. Sable is talking about. It's why if you get hit by electricity, it will conduct. Neurotransmitters are released every time you have a thought and they produce a wave, which contributes to wave collapse, which is why heaven is thoughts above you and hell's thoughts beneath you. What's your opinion on enlightenment? You're going to want to specify that question. Yeah, I'm in Islam. The Dajjal would have the demons come in the form of your parents and raise them from their graves of your parents and tell you to worship the Antichrist. He is God. Yeesh. 
Sounds scary, man. Gnosis ultimate real talk. Isn't Kabbalah dark art sorcery? <laughs> nah, it's definitely not. It's definitely not. It's definitely not. I can assure you that. But that's what people say. That's what people say to keep people away from it. Because guess what? If I tell you, if this book, if this book, and I'm not advertising this book or saying get this book, but I'm just for the example. If this book can change your life, if this book can change your life, right? And I know it can change your life because I've read it and I've changed, it's changed my life. And then somebody on the outside says, no, 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 don't read that book. That book is demonic. That, that, that book is, oh, that's evil, it's satanic. Because of the words associated, because of the thoughts associated with those words, because of the vibration associated with those words, you're not even going to, you're not even going to think about reading it. You're not even going to think about it. You're going to be like, what? Demonic, satanic. I am not going to read that. And just like that, the thing that could have potentially liberated you from the potential circumstance and reality that you're in has gone away. All because of three words, right? You need to understand this thing. So I'm going to reiterate this. Knowledge isn't inherently evil. There's no knowledge that's inherently evil. It's the intention we put behind it. We all know how to kill. I can take a knife. I can cut some bread. I can take a knife. I can kill somebody, right? Knowledge is a knife. It's the intention that you put behind it. So when you're saying the Kabbalah is evil, I'm like, how can the Kabbalah be evil? So for example, uh, where's, the, where's this book on Kabbalah? I have a book on Kabbalah. I don't know where it is. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I don't know where that book is, man. Oh, here. Yeah. Funnily enough, cool. Very basic book on the Kabbalah. The power of Kabbalah, right? So I'm going to open to a random page and read something, right? Because you said, isn't this the dark arts? So let's see how dark it is. An obstacle, an obstacle occurs. Realize that your reaction is the obstacle. Realize that your reaction, not the obstacle, is the real enemy. Shut down your reactive system and allow the light in. Express your proactive nature. Applying the transformation formula. Your friend blows up at you. You're angry, you're upset, you're hurt, you yell back at your friend. That's one way. Next instance, your friend blows up at you. you. Your feelings of being upset, angry are your real enemy, not your friend. Let go of all your emotional reaction. Instead of shouting back, take it all in, even if you're not to blame, just to let your friend vent. What matters is not who is right or wrong. What matters is your decision not to react. You're now in contact with the 99% quantum field God. The emotions you will now feel... And your next set of actions will be rooted in love and light. Automatically, positive feelings and behaviors come forth. N not a single thing dark about that. But because you heard that, instead of actually reading it, you could have allowed somebody to mold your perception on it. So if you want, if you want it, right there, get it, right? And bare people have read this book. No ways. No ways. I just clucked. Um, one of the people that read this book is Guy Ritchie. Everybody knows him. Um, John Gray. John Gray wrote this book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus, which is an amazing book on communication between men and women. Um, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But nah, Kabbalah is not inherently evil, bro. Like it's like don't don't get caught up in don't get caught up in that thinking. It's the easiest way to control niggas. I'm listening to the power of awareness by Say. Does your zodiac sign really shop your personality to agree if you let it? But then again, girls tell me that I'm a typical Taurus, so I don't know. What's the name of the book, bro? Which one? Which one? Which one? We build. We build is just what Mason is. We are all Masons. Most of Freemasons originate from Masons. Cool. Basically, have good intentions. Yeah, literally. Hey, you should do a narration live and explain some shit. You re you want me to break down a book? What was the man the woman's book? Oh, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Great, great book on learning how men communicate and women communicate. Most of the time, when people break down, when couples break down and stuff, it's just because they don't know how each other talk. But like, if I was to read something from this book, a lot of the guys would be like, "Raw, like, yeah, that is like me." And girls would do the same thing. For example, most guys can just go quiet and just kind of, it says men go into their caves and women talk. So when men are, you know, feeling some type of way, we just, we just go neutral, we just go quiet.
but a girl not knowing how to deal with that can aggravate him even more or blow something out of proportion or reach a certain conclusion whereas women talk for example when women come home talk about their day yeah yeah this girl she said this to me can you believe this bitch said this and she's a fucking bitch because you know she did this and guys are like wow why don't you just not talk to her why don't you just avoid her and girls get angry it's because women don't want solutions they just want to vent because it's what they do but if you don't know how we communicate then you can never actually you know what i'm saying like girls will be upset one day for no reason and as a guy if you're like raw why is she upset you know is there anything i can do you're only going to contribute to more you just gotta let it pass but if you don't know how to communicate um then i guess you always have problems with men and women so it's really it's really a good book and that's not even an occultic book to any degree it's just just a just a standard book man how many times do you read a day? Bro, I swear I've been asked this question like three times now. I read for like two to three hours a day, my guy. Most people can't manifest because they don't trust the universe and give the power to an external source. Real talk. Do you like The Way of Superior Man? That's a great book. That's a really, really good book by David Dada. Great book. Do you do the exercise in the science being? Yeah, definitely. I do the, even the star exercise. I'm glad you got that book, bro. I wonder where you got that one from. Um. Oh, you don't generalize us. <laughs> You're right. My bad. My bad. My bad. What's the communication book? Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Damn. Let me show you guys. Maybe I didn't show it clearly. My bad. But here. You should have screenshot by now. If you niggas are lacking, then you're just lacking. Uh, funniest thing I've ever heard is women are emotional, men are logical. Men are just as emotional as women in different ways. Psh. Try and make us all like we're rocks, man. Um, Nero, even though you're a young individual, you're incredibly awake. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is it bad if, if from time to time you question the knowing then snap back into a state? What do you mean? Express more on what you mean by that, bro. What was the book that changed your life again? Yeah. You know what I mean? There's Everybody's, everybody's looking for that one book that changes their life. And I don't think you should look for that. I think you should just try to read as many books as you can. Because each book will give you different aspects of things. For example, I can tell you how the destruction of the black civilization changed my life. I can tell you how the autobiography of Malcolm X changed my life. But it's like, changed it to what degree and how far? You feel me? I can tell you how, how Europe underdeveloped Africa changed my life. But it's like, to what degree? Like, different books serve different roles. If you're talking about from a perspective of spirituality, then three magic words, probably. If you're talking about manifestation... Neville Goddard, The Complete Reader. If you're talking about the occult or the esoteric, probably be The Science of Being. Um, if you're talking about business, it could be, um, what's that book by David Priestley called? Over, Oversubscribed. Um, yeah, like it just depends to what degree. But people don't know this about me, but the first couple of books I ever read were all like pro-black books. So post-traumatic slave syndrome, niggas to gods niggas to gods volume two message to the black man um um the book of god the encyclopedia of how the black man is god um the destruction of the black civilization by chancellor williams how europe underdeveloped africa um black labor white wealth um the autobiography of malcolm x did i say post-traumatic slave syndrome already but those are the first books I ever read. The first books I ever read were all in regards to black people. Because at the time, you know, when you're black, you kind of have a gap in your history as to how far it goes. So I said, damn, let me see, let me see what the history is saying. Understanding the systems, you know, institutional, institutional racism and stuff like that. Which, it was good that I learned that stuff, but I don't step with that in consciousness anymore. Because I understand that reality is shifted by consciousness. So I don't step with the idea that there's people that are inherently racist that want to fuck me up. In my world, everybody loves me. Which is why my, my life is quite, it's quite nice. Except the HMRC though. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm just trying to catch up with all these. 
Is there a book that help you increase your self-belief? What's only going to help you increase your self-belief is practice. That's the only thing that's going to help you increase self-belief. Just practice. Because I can, I, can tell you, I can tell you from a quantum physical perspective. I can tell you from a biblical perspective. I can tell you from a spiritual perspective how you shift your reality with your mind. But it's like, I'm just saying shit. But when you do it yourself, you're like, raw. I can do this. Racism is a spell. I mean, the gospel is a spell. It's a gospel is good spell. <laughs> take that. Take from that what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Message me about it, P. Don't worry. Tyrese, what are you telling me? How you doing? Clip gems. I appreciate you too. Moldavite. I've never heard of that. Sorry. Never heard of that. How do you practice self-belief? I was assuming the person was asking self-belief in regards to your belief in manifestation. But if you're talking about self-belief in like believing in yourself, I don't know how to teach a nigga how to believe in themselves. It's like, how, how can you not believe in yourself? Because if you don't do it, then who's it going to be? Because there was a million other sperms that could have been here, but it was you. So you've already been running the race before you could talk. So how are you just going to let it all go now? It's like, how can you not believe in yourself? Because if you don't believe in yourself, who is it going to be? No one's coming to save you. Jesus, Jesus ain't coming back and free niggas from jail. And he's not going to give you a mansion. Like, it's really just you out here. And it's not, it's not more so that I have self-belief. It's like, what's the alternative? Like, what's the alternative? I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what the alternative is. The alternative is suffering and pain and struggle. It's like, I'm not going to do that. Have you already read any, have you read any books by Robert Greene? Yeah, I've read The Art of Seduction, The 33 Strategies of War, The 48 Laws of Power, The Daily Laws. The Daily Laws is really good. For people that want to get into Robert Greene introdu at an introductory level, The Daily Laws is really, really good. It's, a, it's, it's like a, it's him comprising all his books into each day. It's a really, really good, really, really good. My favorite Robert Greene book is The Art of Seduction because I believe everything is seduction, you know, from trying to talk to women, you know, or if you're a woman trying to talk to men in business, relationships, like, so you need to know and have the ability to be able to seduce. Um, but then it'll be the 33 Strategies of War. 33 Strategies of War is my favorite Robert Greene book by all means. Like, he, he killed it. Like, he killed the 33 Strategies of War. That's my favorite. Especially the audio book, too, because some of them niggas really have cool voices. It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I look into Moldavite after this. Thank you. Where do you think I lie on the map of consciousness? Do I feel enlightened? Um, let me show you where I think I lie. Uh, I think, I think I'm somewhere, I think I'm somewhere here. Like, you know what I mean? Somewhere there. But, you know, people might think that I think that I'm enlightened or I'm some spiritual nigga. I don't think I'm enlightened. People say, do you think your third eye is open? I don't think so at all. I, I genuinely don't think so. I'm I'm just out here, man. <laughs> like, I don't really... When I do this stuff, I don't think to myself, oh, I want to raise my vibration. Oh, I want to be enlightened. I just do the shit that I do. You know what I mean? Mm, couldn't those emotions be fleeting emotions too? Uh, it depends what you were referring to that I was talking about. I don't remember what we were talking about, my guy. What's your best audio book? 48 Laws of Power. If you're talking about the production or 50 Cent's books, um, 50 Cent's, uh, what's his book called? The 50th Law with Robert Greene, the audio book read by Robert Greene and 50 Cent. <whistles> that is a killer audio book. Yeah, 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 definitely. Where you, where you vary on the emotional chart, definitely, it's, it, it varies because emotions are never, they're never fixated. But you have a base moods. Do you use the Taoist practices? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I actually do. Funny thing is, like my my um my girl was like to me, "Oh, why are you why are you squatting like that?" Like I was doing one deep squat or something, and I was just holding it, 
with a with this with this mudra like this she was like what is going on like i I really do this stuff like i really do this stuff like even the microcosmic orbit of testicle breathing and shifting and pulling that energy up to my head and recycling it back down like i really do this stuff you know what i mean do you have a go-to place for buying books yeah amazon bro But yeah, I really do this stuff. I I really do it. Thoughts on Demon Slayer. Great anime. Great. Not not my favorite, but great. Best anime, hands down. Ain't One Piece. Forget forget the One Piece people. This is Dragon. My favorite, Hunter x Hunter. Hunter x Hunter. Can't beat Gun Fricks, man. You really can't. Um, How do you fight your demons? I ain't got demons. No, I'm joking. Um, when you when people say how do you fight demons, I'm assuming they're referring to overcoming your lower self, and it's not necessarily demons. It's just the lower aspect of yourself that wants to give into the reaction, the anger, the frustration, the envies, the lower portion of human nature. And what I really do is just an ability to be able to rationalize my thoughts and then process it. That's it. Like think of really be calculated, really be calculated. You feel me? Have you ever watched Naruto? Don't ask me silly questions, man. Don't ask me silly questions. How can you ask me silly questions like that? How can people say, have you watched Naruto? What's going on here? How, how, could, how could anyone not watch Naruto? Of course I watch Naruto. My favorite, my favorite was um, Obito. He was my favorite. Can't beat Obito. Hunter x Hunter is my favorite anime. Yeah, you're about it still. You're about it. Enlighten, humble about it, Lord. The what of testicle? Oh, yeah, it's called testicle breathing, Tina. Yeah, so one of the practices that um, they get you to do is something called testicle breathing, which is essentially you breathe into your nuts. I don't know what else to say. Like, you really breathe into your nuts. Um, you know, it talks about seeing your nuts as lungs and you breathe into them because essentially what you what you require that for the microcosmic orbit, which is the process of recycling that energy, you breathe into your nuts you kind of tense, you tense your pelvic floor muscles, but then almost like a straw, you suck that energy up the spine of your back, bring it up to the top of your mind, hold it there, and then breathe it back down into the pelvic floor muscles, and it just goes like this, just, just over and over again. Jujutsu Kaisen's better. Jujutsu Kaisen is not better than, Jujutsu Kaisen is not better than Hunter x Hunter. The only person that makes Jujutsu Kaisen is Gojo. That's literally it. Like he's he he makes it. I even saw the film. Actually, 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 actually. No, that was the Demon Slayer film. No, I saw the Jujutsu Kaisen film. Yeah, I saw both the films. Lord, man, them are funny. They can't even say testicle breathing. They just put test breathing. You're funny. <laughs> the Cultivated Male Sexual Energy book by Mantai Chia. That's the best one. That is the best one. Is the Full Metal Alchemist an alchemy role? Yeah, 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 yeah. Even the signs in Full Metal Alchemist. If you're preening the signs, you've seen those signs everywhere. You've seen the alchemy sign everywhere. You've seen the alchemy sign on the Egyptian with the pyramid, right? The, the alchemy sign. Even if you look at the 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 um the bar called the Alchemist, right? In like London or Manny or Broom, like wherever, it's a literary triangle with a circle. The philosopher, the ph- e, e, the philosopher's stone. <laughs> <laughs> and you see that in Full Metal Alchemist, like you see these symbols. Like anime is extremely occultic. Naruto, when he goes into his light mode, he's got six 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 all over him, and it's like what the devil, the mark of the beast. Six 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 is carbon. If you understand, pure carbon is melanin. Right here, it condenses sunlight. It literally takes in light. It's light at its purest form. That's why Naruto's got six 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 on him. Jujutsu Kaisen talks about how curses are created. Curses or demons, they're created by negative thought forms and extreme trauma and emotion gives life to those entities. You feel me? Like all of this stuff is really, really extremely occultic, but you're not going to catch it if you don't know. Even if you look at Promised Neverland, it talks about people being raised on a farm where they're just being fed to these higher entities. That's, what, that's essentially what humans are. 
You know what I mean? In Promised Neverland. So, anime is extremely occult. You just need to be able to clock on it. Best meditation book. Uh, from Mindful to Mindful. Right here. From Mindful to Mindful. Really, really good book for meditation. Really, really good book. Yeah, it talks about war gazing and shit. You just stare at a war for hours. <laughs> really, really good book. Promise Neverland's a really good anime. Here it is. Thank you to the person who said he reads two to three hours daily. <laughs> oh, niggas know I've been asked that like a hundred times. Ways to increase your money consciousness. Understand that it's an energy. When I say to people money is an energy, they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, cool. Give me a purchase that's not made on emotion. If you if you purchase some food, you want to get rid of the emotion of hunger. Or you want to experience the emotion of eating good food. If you want to wear clothes, you want to experience a particular emotion. Safety. Each, each There's not a single transaction in this world that's committed with that emotion. Emotion is energy in motion, literally. And then people make... Purchases based on value, value and value and emotion are directly interconnected, which means that money is an energy. I'll break, I'll take it even further. The largest transfers of money, billions, are made through satellite communications. Satellite communications communicate via radio waves. Radio waves are a manipulated form of energy because of waves and energy. But when we manipulate it to communicate, it's just a form of manipulated energy. There's radio waves passing through your body right now, exactly where you are right now. So there's billions flowing through you right now but you just need to know how to redirect that energy and transmute it to you it's like pastors are amazing at transmuting energy and directing it because in church what do all the niggas do to the front they do this they lift up their hands towards his direction you just need to know all of these things but that's one aspect of it and once you begin to understand that the universe is imbued with energy and you are a form of energy you begin to see yourself as money then Nobody could ever tell you otherwise, you feel me? But yeah. Mm. Nah, Death Note was heavy, 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 heavy. Read as a leader, real talk. I'm certain this person is just asking how many hours I read to troll at this point. But anyways, that is the... <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's violating. Man said hop on minoxidil. Bro, I tried it. It gave me spots, so I just left it. I really tried. Um, it's coming though. Pause. Well, I tried, man. I tried the minoxidil thing. It gave me spots. So, I don't know. But yeah, guys, that's the end of the live. Um, I will save the live so you can get all the books after. Make sure you comment. And while you're all here, make sure to go click the link in my bio if you're interested in the esoteric and using the esoteric hidden secrets of the universe to restructure your reality. Make sure to go sign up for my newsletter. Link in the bio. Make sure you go sign up for the link in my bio newsletter. And you know what the best part about this is? I take off my glasses and you guys don't know nothing. I'll catch you guys later.